welcome back to my channel. So my name is B. I am a naturally a risk management professional, a creative learner, and a lifelong learner. So I am studying uh, for my second master in computer and IT at UPenn. And in today's video, I'm very pleased to have um, another student from the program to come and talk about uh, his work as a software engineer. Uh, if you watch my previous video about the 14 career paths for computer science and IT major, this will be one of it. Uh, hi, Wing. Thanks for being here today. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, hi, V. It's my pleasure being here. So my name is Gwen. I'm a software engineer at the Vita, and I also joined V with our master's in computer information technologies at university. Uh, so what led you to study the mechanic, uh, mechanical engineering in uh, math in undergrad, and then the master of computer and IT uh, for graduate degree? Gotcha. So when I was in uh, my undergrad, I actually majored in mechanical engineering at Purdue University. And then after I graduated, I started my job as a design engineer to build vibratory power driver. So it's, I do both mechanical, electrical, and computer software programming on the project itself. And as I keep on working with the project, I realize, do I want to live underneath the API, which is to use software that other people created and then build products upon it? Or do I want to live above the API, which is to create the software that other people created? I realized after I worked for a while, I really enjoy working above the API, building the software that other engineers use. That's so much fun. So I actually learned coding on my own, like significantly more than what's required at my job. And then I decided to pivot into software engineering at Penn, just to further my understanding of the software world. And so far, I've been. So do you think like um, the knowledge you gained so far from uh, the master has helped you with your work? Uh, I would say tremendously. I would put it this way. It's that I wouldn't think of a traditional curriculum as being like comprehensive, as in they will teach you how to do it and what to do and why you have to do. I would think of it as being more foundational. So they teach you why do you have to do such thing and what kind of critical mindset you have to put yourself in and they train you in that classical thinking in order to keep on and understanding what tools are the modern engineering, you know, world required. Yeah. So I would say that. Yeah, I always say like, um, I like the structure of it where we have the six foundation courses, especially for the people that have uh, no career design background like me. So I think that that is great for people to like get to have a more foundation understanding and uh, we can build on uh, those understanding as you mentioned. So can you tell us a little bit about your professional path and like your work as a software engineer, like maybe your responsibilities or typical day or the week look like for you? Gotcha. So I would actually split the answer into two smaller answers. The first one would be the chronological move. And then the second one would be the specific of what I'm doing right now. So chronologically, I started my job as a design engineer. So in my mind, after I graduated from college, I realized I need to do three things, going from zero to one going from one to N and going from N to N squared in terms of company size because the three problems that I saw at each different size are drastically different. So I started at a one to N kind of company. I learned how the world works. I learned how industry works compared to academia and I learned how to solve real life problems. I then transitioned into the startup world at another company. And then that's how I learned going from zero to one. I learned how to scale the company. I learned how to build a platform as a service, and, you know, a software as a service kind of job, how it did, how to do B2B and et cetera. After I learned those things, I realized now I need to go from end to end square. That's why I joined the Vita because the work at the Vita is really fascinating to me. And then I learned to integrate from one department to other department at a huge company with the scale of doing billions of dollars of work. So without going to without going to too much of the details of what I'm working, what I'm currently working is implementing a service, a learning management system into our electronic medical record, which is also proprietary. And then so I would say on my day-to-day -day job, 
we have a mix between like the modern working environment and also we have elements of what works before and if it doesn't break, you know, not break. Uh, so I'm basically on every every morning I would report to my supervisor, my boss, my manager, and also to my co-workers on the progress of what I'm doing. And so far it works really well. And then I also budget focus time so that just so that I could do work on itself, like, you know, coding, et cetera. I would say in contrary to what other people think, as a software engineer, I would spend the majority of my time Google because I don't know the, sometimes I don't know like, oh, I could reinvent the wheel or I could implement an API that, you know, just work as well. And I don't have to worry about other problems like introducing bugs and any kind of production problem. It just makes more sense to use a tool other people created. But I have to, I have to make sure that the tool that I'm using makes sense, have the approval of my technical manager. And then it just fits in the grand scheme with regarding other departments too. So a lot of time just reading documentation, implementing API, writing code, debugging, et cetera. Yes, I would say the Google part is so true because like it makes sense, like the information, the knowledge of so many people out there for us to leverage is so much easier uh, to use yeah. than for us to create something from like the ground. What strength do you think will be, or like skill set knowledge will be like the most important for a software engineer? I would say in contrary to what other people think, I think soft skills are actually really, really, really important. Of course, it's like foundationally, you need to get stuff done. You need to be able to write code. You need to be able to test it. You need to be able to think not just in terms of the code you are writing, but you know, future repairability. You need to make sure that it's scalable. You have to take all of those things into consideration. But at the same time, it just, if you cannot work with other people, you cannot scale your work. At the end of the day, if you want to build a $3 billion, $4 billion product, that means you cannot build everything on your own. You need to have great communication, great leadership. And with other departments, with other teammates, that's how you get to scale. And being able to empathize and sympathize with other people being able to communicate really well and understand it from the other person's perspective, being able to understand not just the technical needs, but also the budget needs and the human resource needs of your boss makes the job significantly easier, which in turn makes the job significantly easier. Just because you can technically do it doesn't mean it makes the budget sense to do it. And you have to understand it from that perspective. Yeah, very good. I totally agree because I, I think uh... Sometimes it's the technical part can or theoretical wise can be easy, but then if we have to put ourselves in the constraint of a business environment where you have time of uh, constraint, you have resource constraint and uh, everything, right? So it's just like uh, priorities and stuff. It's like the soft skill is where it can take us to the next level to, to really help us to uh, build a business case or solve a business problem that meet customer demand and other people. Uh, uh, great uh, require requirements and such. So I, I'm I'm very glad that you actually uh, say say mentioned like soft skill is like one of the important things that we need to uh, consider. Even though like this career path is very technical, so I would say one of the challenge um like one of the most challenging for me in, in technical uh career is that like keeping up with uh, technical knowledge, or in this case, like uh, technical skills, right? You, we want to keep it up with all of the development in, in tech. So how do you keep it, uh, keep up your te technology skill current? Gotcha. I mean, uh, I would say the conventional way of answering the question would be answer from the bottom up. It's like, I do this, I do that. I realize that's not a really good answer because that's very temporal. You can, you can always answer it to now. And it doesn't solve the question of how do I approach it? I realize a much better answer would be answer it from the top down. We have to realize that the more you learn, you don't just learn how to do it. You also have to learn the history of development, which takes quite a bit of time, you know, a couple of months just to understand it. The reason why I'm asking, the reason why I'm saying is this. As a surgeon, you have tools to solve a problem. As a ear 
um, nose throat. You also have different tools to solve different problems. So you have to understand what a specific language and a framework is best at in order to know what should you do next. Even to do a data analysis, even do AI, machine learning, etc. Right? Choose a notebook and Python will be your to go. And if you want to do in that, you want to keep on the mindset of both. So I want to make this step easier. What library should I pick up next? So you pick up the library for the sake of making your work easier, not picking it up for the sake of, I want to pick it up because I need to pick it up. Right? You use C for um, operating system, et cetera, like the Linux kernel. So you want to know what you want to do next and you delve in that ecosystem. Within that ecosystem, you pick up the tools in the library that fits your needs the most. And that's how you know what to do next, because that's what you want to do and you want to find the easiest way to do it. Right. And that's how you keep on learning. Because even though, like, let's say with uh, React, right? React changes so many times. They go from uh, a single way, they go into promises, and now they go into hook. Really different way of solving the same problem of being, you know, viewing stateless asynchronous algorithm. But at the same time, it's like, can you understand why they have to do the way they do it? It's easier to catch up because you are not catching up with everything. Like, I would say systemic changes actually happen really slowly. Like every day, it, the, the, the new libraries are like the volatility of the stock market. On the long run, it, it goes up, but sometimes it goes a little bit up, a little bit down. Most of the time, you need you just need to focus on the long run. Yeah, that's a very good way to approach this. And um, it's like, I think like what you're trying to get at is like knowing the foundation of things, like knowing the mm -hmm. background underlying the history so that like if we have a strong foundation, it's easier yeah. for us to just pick up like incremental uh, knowledge or, or like information that we, we need to keep it up. Uh, so yeah, I, I really yeah. like the yeah, approach of uh, uh, studying or learning <laughs> keep us yeah. up today. So now that like uh, you've been uh, working and studying for a few years now, so like if you can give an advice to your younger self, what would you say? I would say in terms of sometimes you need to understand the core message of what you are trying to do. I think the biggest lesson that I learned with software engineering it's abstraction that in terms of thinking, how can I abstract all the steps I'm doing as a solution to something else? I think of it as a lot of people chases jobs and in order to chase jobs, you need to learn stuff. And you always have the question that as an 18 year old, right? I don't know. I'll be honest. When I was 18, I don't know what I want to study. I, I asked my dad. Hey, Dad, what should I study? Should I do math, economics, computer science, or mechanical engineering? And that didn't really have a concrete answer to me. So I just picked mechanical engineering because I feel like, oh, that's actually physical, right? I can actually touch it. If it breaks, I kind of know how to fix it, right? That should be easier. And as I go into, you know, like two, three years in my career, I realize I, re I really like the solving the problem and less with the hands-on as I get more confident in myself. So I would say the biggest lesson is just the abstraction of thinking takes a lot of time. Just be really patient with yourself and then focus on whether, if you are a builder, which I am, it uh, wrote ahead. It just pick whatever you want to do. And then as you venture a little bit into it, do internship, do research. If there's aspect of it that you really like and move into that. So you can move into electrical. You can move into from mechanical engineering to electrical engineering if you really like the electrical stuff. Or if you like, if you do mechanical engineering and you really like the computer part, do computer engineering or do software engineering. Just try, you know, make mistakes, repeat, and make progress. I hope you find today's video helpful. And if so, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. So I hope you understand more about the work of a software engineer and career in tech. And uh, yeah, I think one of the biggest takeaway is that even though for a very quantitative career, uh, developing soft skill is still greatly important. And it's especially it will be even more important if you're looking to become a manager, a leader. So I wish you another happy productive week ahead and I will see you in another episode. Bye now!